Hey everybody on YouTube. So we live off grid. Uh, a lot of people follow this channel. You probably live off grid or you're interested in living off grid. And part of the challenges of it is off grid battery maintenance. And so we've been off grid here for uh, about right about four years. Um, this bank right here is close to that. Uh, we were in for a few months doing remodel stuff before we actually put these in. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate. I haven't quite hit four years. I'd like to see, you know, five years out of these batteries before I start to really have problems with them. But we were starting to know a little bit or notice a little bit of heavy discharge from one of the cells. And then the last couple of days I noticed when I was getting up, um, my batteries were lower than normal. And I knew right then, hey, we, we normally check them probably once a month with the hydrometer, but we needed to check them right away. Uh, I had Kanan get in here and we went through and we found one battery that had a completely dead cell. Now, part of what happens here is that each, each string um, having uh, eight batteries consisting of three cells each, if one of those cells dies, the rest of them have to compensate. Now, we luckily caught it at only one cell, so each one t uh, kind of absorbed that extra voltage. Um, but by catching it early, we were able to get a replacement battery. We're going to switch this out and hopefully we don't start losing other batteries. Because when you start losing a lead acid battery, or even any battery for that matter, uh, when the other batteries have to start compensating for the voltage change, it's like a domino. When this battery goes out, it takes the next weakest link, and it just starts going downhill from there. And this is where I see a lot of batteries where people don't check it with a hydrometer. They lose the whole bank you know, in a, in a matter of little time because they didn't catch the one battery that went out first. So we're gonna put this one in. Then we're going to go to a weekly uh, checking with a hydrometer to, to monitor the rest of them and make sure that we aren't starting to lose other ones because if we do, that'll be the time where well, I'm just going to have to switch the whole bank out. Um, and then I'll break them down and use batteries other places for the ones that are okay. But it's better to catch it now so we don't have any issues. Uh, one of the things we'll show you after we look at these batteries is we're also, uh, we have our existing system, which you guys have seen videos of. We're actually building another system that I picked up some used inverters. Uh, I got some batteries from Outback to play with, and we're building another system in the wood shop so that we can power that independently. And we'll go over, we'll look at the new nanocarbon batteries and give you some information on those too. Completely sealed cell, um, you know, no equalization, no maintenance of the battery cables. It's gonna, they can sit at what they call a post, the partial state of charge. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that, those batteries will compare and run some of the bigger loads and some of the other stuff that we wanna take off this system. So uh, I'm going to switch over and do some recording. We're going to look at some hydrometer data, which Kanan's going to do, and we'll show you guys how we found this bad cell. Thanks. Okay, we're back. Okay, so I get these battery hydrometers from uh, my local battery place, um, Battery Systems. Uh, you can see it says US Battery. It's a, just a standard hydrometer. And basically what you're looking for is you're looking cons for consistent um, readings across the whole bank. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the bad battery that we have right here. We're going to start at the good cells in the front. So Cannon's going to be taken. He's going to pull up some water in it. There we go. I'm going to get it up high. Now we can see in there that we're getting a specific gravity of about point or 1.265. Um, I'm sorry, that was 0.1265. Now we're going to go to the next cell. Okay, again, we have another specific gravity of 0.1265. Now we're going to go to the back cell, which is what we found was the problem. Okay, now we've equalized these things for about an hour and a half. Um, and we can see that that cell is completely down in the zero. There's, that cell doesn't want to recover. So we know that that right there is part of the drain on the system and why we're seeing a little bit more uh, a different water usage pattern than what we've seen before. So we're going to take and we're going to switch this battery out. Um, we're going to go through and equalize the batteries one more time and see if we can get these things operating better. Kanan, he's here. He's kind of our grunt labor technical guy in training. And we're going to switch these things out and get them back hopefully in shape.
Okay, we're back in action. So, we removed our bad battery, set it off to the side, and we'll take it back to be uh, recycled at the battery distributor. Uh, you can see we got our new USL16 high capacity battery wired in. Um, some of the things that you saw me do, uh, I can't really do a lot of voiceovering, was um, I turned the whole system off, um, I went into my mechanical bypass, um, turn the system, the AC power so I can run all the lights and everything so we can run off the generator. It's cloudy and cold outside so we didn't want to do it in the dark. Um, just turned on the generator, went into bypass mode so we could operate everything and then reversed everything, uh, went back on to the inverter mode. Um, one other thing different about my system is we got our charge controllers right here. Um, we got two midnights which are running the roof system the Outback, which is running an eight panel pole mount, which was our original main array. I'm actually gonna take that eight panel, the Outback controller right here, and we're gonna redirect that and feed that over to our new Xantrex system. Well, our new to us Xantrex system. Um, part of what, one of the things that's different about our system too, is we have two DC disconnect boxes. Uh, the left one over here, this really is just for the inverters and the FlexNet system right now. Um, it's got room so that I can add in a second or two more inverters later on. Um, this box over here, this is actually just gonna be my charge controller and like kind of let's call it a renewable disconnect. All of the breakers for our charge controllers, uh, the hydro, the wind turbine, everything is gonna be able to come into there and go into uh, its own disconnect. So if we need to shut power off to those just for any reason to, to do wiring to make the whole system safe, we can kind of isolate those from the battery bank and do everything at the same time. We got some cobwebs. Uh, these are for our future stuff that we're adding for the hydro and the wind turbine. Kind of got everything already set up for that. I just got to make some time to get them put in. But uh, again, we got uh, we got the bad battery switched out. We'll see. We'll do an equalization right now. Really boil everything hard, and hopefully tomorrow morning I can see a lot better battery voltages than than what we were seeing from before. Um, you can see right here we are. You know we were already pretty charged up before this. Um, I need to kick on the exhaust fans. Um, you can also see back in there, I got the new battery rack and ready to go up. So we'll, uh, we'll just have to see here what happens tomorrow. Go in. We'll go next. Yeah, we can see a low voltage. I think we were seeing that because we were seeing a, a massive dip. My system has never hit that low before. It's either because we shut it off or because we had a major drop because of the low voltage. So we'll see what we get tomorrow. All right, how's it going? So I was telling you guys about our other system. Um, our house, we got uh, the main power room, and then we got a, kind of our garage, which is our metal shop, and then now we're building a kind of a wood shop so that we can build other stuff. Um, what you can kind of see behind me here is the new system that we're building. Um, this is a system that I removed off a project. It was a grid tie with battery backup. The guy had nothing but problems. If you've seen some of my other videos, his batteries actually exploded. Uh, I did some horse trading. Uh, I did some labor swap for the, with him to put the new uh, Sunny Boy 6.0 6 on there. And he gave me the two XW6048 inverters, the two charge controllers, and the dis their disconnect box that they have. Um, you can see that it has all the integral breakers for everything, two and for the inverters, uh, four for the charge controllers for the input and the output, and it has all the bypass breaker assembly in there. Um, this isn't a bad setup. Um, when we look at some of the other platforms like the Radian, um, which is probably my favorite system to work with, you know, up to date, um, this one has a lot of room. One of the awesome things they did is they made it so that there's plenty of space to do all the electrical in here where the radian, basically they call that one like the DNA box. I mean, basically it's so tight that, you know, you're, you're always leaving some DNA inside that thing. So I have all the primary AC wiring for the system done. Um, I got to run a generator feed, which is actually just on the other side, which is going to be the old air compressor feed will be the charging circuit. Um, we're going to put a critical load sub panel over there which will power you know most of the wood shop stuff that we got going in here um, what i'm most excited about with this because the xw it's a great inverter uh, we got two 6048s 
So we're going to have some good starting capacity to run the table saw, some of the other 240. I'm going to try running the, the five horse air compressor. Um, you know, it's, it's a good platform, but again, I prefer XW, uh, the Outback system. I'm sorry, I prefer the Radian Outback system. Uh, the interface for it's way better. Um, if there's any problems with the system, there's power modules, you can bypass one um, and still work off the other half, the inverter. Uh, it's field serviceable, where this one not so much. The controller is a much easier one to use. Uh, here is the, this is the Xantrex controller. It's a little dirty. Uh, it's kind of archaic for what we have now. The Mate, uh, the new Mate 3 from Outback is a way superior product. And with the new uh, Optics RE, the ability that I have to monitor everything is, is, a, is a good deal. So um, in one of my other videos, that you guys saw we did a, a battery upgrade and we put in the nanocarbons um, this is going to be another bank of nanocarbons that outback hooked me up with um, for my own stuff to play with and i kind of needed this to fit a certain space i didn't want it to stick out too far i didn't want to put them in the other shop and so this configuration that i came up with is going to be four per row and instead of making them stick out um, i went lengthwise and kind of came up with this chase so that everything will kind of go up from the bottom with the feeds and then we'll put a pipe that'll connect up into there for the disconnect so super excited about getting this up and running um, we're also going to be able to take and put some other loads on this system as well i'll probably put the swamp cooler loads for the cooling maybe the furnace and we're going to have uh, close to 600 amp hours of storage here uh, my shop doesn't get much use because unfortunately i work too much so i look at it as this battery bank right here is really going to be kind of offsetting my heating and cooling from my main system, which is really gonna reduce the need of storage that I'm gonna need over on the other side. And also give me the redundancy that if something happens, I'll kind of have two systems that can power my house. So pretty excited to be getting this edition up and running. And uh, I'll come back and gonna use this one as, I didn't have much time, nor did I really have a YouTube channel going when I wired the other system. As I start bringing in circuits and starting to wire this one and get it programming, uh, I'll do some videos. Some people have asked me to really talking about more in depth of how we wired the batteries, um, how we hooked up the charge controllers, and really the, the electrical that kind of comes to this and out of it. So thanks again for watching my videos, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.